Hey, what's going on guys? H Masters here today doing a Lego Batman movie review. This time it is on item number 70916, the Batwing. This set comes with 1053 pieces and the ages are 9 to 14. The set also comes with three minifigures. In front of the box you can of course see the Batwing fighting Harley Quinn. On the back of the box you can just see all of these sets functions. The Batwing itself is absolutely massive. However, it's mainly more width than it is length. When you look at it from a top view, you can really see just how wide it is. You can also really see how well of a job they did getting the look of a bat to actually come off of this thing. But taking a look at the actual Batwing, you can see a lot of cool stuff. There's a lot of little greebling that's done, especially around the engine pods. When you look at the top, you can see greebling all over there, and there's a lot of stickers used on the actual wings themselves to really show a lot of cool details in there. Taking a look, starting out with the cockpit here, you can see a lot of cool details already. First off, you can see the Batman symbol right in the front, which is cool. You can also see right here they use these two, well actually they have uh, two sets of dual sort of small silver cylinder cones here, used to sort of resemble blasters. You can also of course see details on the side, it says on each side black thunder and shows the Batman symbol and there's also a arrow pointing to a sort of like danger sign which is another cool little detail. You can also vaguely see in the corner a little bit of some more stickers and details to sort of represent a little bit of the mechanical engineering in there. Taking a look inside the cockpit though, you can see a lot more details. There are tons of stickers used inside to really get a lot of the details in there. You can see just all sorts of things. You can see in the back that there is, of course, a sticker to sort of resemble flying a plane. And then in the front, there are two control sticks. And neither of the seats are actually studded, so you can easily fit a figure in there and easily take them out. The cockpit also has seating for two, which means that you can pretty much put every figure that comes in the set inside of the Batwing itself, which is really nice, and you can actually fit them in with the most part with their accessories. In Batman's case, you would have to move the battering just a little bit, and in Harley Quinn's case, you just have to take off the hammer entirely and throw it somewhere in the back. But you can get their accessories in there fully. Moving further along the Batwing, you can see I have a gun on the top, which is actually slightly up offset compared to centered, and there is a reason for that. This entire gun actually activates a function which is pretty well operated where basically you spin the gun around and what will happen is that those sort of uh, jet propulsions on the side will spin around. However, it is a little bit annoying because you have to spin it multiple times to actually get it to fully go in a full 360. In addition, you can't actually sit it on the ground without it being um, offset in the center which is annoying because for some people they're going to want it to be in the center but they're never going to be able to get that without building a stand on their own with other parts that don't come in the set which is kind of annoying for certain people however I don't think it's too big of a deal however I wish there was a way where you could sort of leave the function out and so you could have you know more posability for that gun and just more you know sort of custom ability for how you want to have this thing posed. However, there's still a lot of playability you can get from the function. The function does give you the whole ability where when you spin this around, you can really pretend to be sort of taking like a vertical takeoff, going all the way up, and then you can move it back and blast forward like this. There is playability you can get from it. However, it feels just way too slow to me because the way this is, is of course you gotta move it around so many times to get the full 360, you know? You gotta go like four 360 rotations to actually get back to where you originally started, which is really annoying for something you would want to do really quickly. I wish it was just, you know, more like quarter rotations, so you would go right here and that would get to like one section, you go here, go to another section, go here, third, and you know, and so on. But you know, the way it is, it's just, you know, you gotta move it all over. You also, of course, can, just like I did. You don't need to use the function, you know, you can use just this which still works, but you know, it's not quite as, you know, intended, you know, you, you can move it manually, you don't have to use the gun on the top, that is an option. The engine pods themselves are also really detailed. On the top here you can see a bunch of grill plates along with a gear which really gets some more detail. The front has just a ton of vents here to sort of represent the air control. You can also see a sticker which says caution intake. On the back you can see a whole pod section and 
The pods actually do have a sticker that says exhaust, which is kind of funny. And then on the bottom, you can of course see some jet propulsions in yellow, which just look pretty good. The back of the Batwing also looks really cool with all of the sort of the jets coming out. You can see tons of little details. There's also two more little jets on the bottom there, which you can't see as well because they are, you know, behind this sort of handle thing here. The only thing that kind of annoys me is that this giant piece right here is gray instead of black, which really breaks up the whole color scheme because the whole thing's black and then they just kind of threw this one gray piece there. However, there's a purpose for it. This actually moves down and inside there's a little cart which you can put Robin on who you can sort of drive in. It's a small little thing. It works decently well. It's actually kind of cool. I would like to see them actually make more poly bags of these for other characters because I think it'd be cool if you had different color schemes and different poly bags and you could buy them and then you would have other options for the, the, uh, the Batwing so you could have other characters inside, you know, it'd be kind of cool. But this easily just rolls back in like this, you know, you just put it back here and then you can just close this up. It works pretty well and it's not too bad. And when you can open it up, you can also see some of the interior inside of there, which of course is kind of a map, you know, there's not all that much. However, something interesting is you can see the gears of the function actually operating. The only kind of bad thing about this setup here is that you can't actually fit this little car inside with Robin on. If you try to put him inside, he'll get stuck up here and there's just, you can't get him inside. So you have to take Robin off and just put the car back in the way it is and then just re-close it up like that. The other thing of course from the back is that there is this giant handle. Now there are different ways to hold it. You could hold it like this all the way from the back which puts pretty much all the way in the front. But this is sturdy enough where it's not going to break because there's lots of building there. You could hold it from the sides like this with extra support. And if you really wanted to you could even take an extra hand and hold it from the bottom. Which is what I would probably recommend if you have littler kids to do because this is actually decently heavy. It's a thing that if you're not, you know all that strong you're probably gonna be dropping because there's so much weight here now they do a good job counterbalancing it because there's a lot of weight in the front and you would think the center of gravity would be just completely against this however the wings do a good job counterbalancing it and sort of balancing the weight a little bit here which is nice to see that they did get a little bit of engineering and they were really get this thing to be sturdy you know you can shake it a lot like this and you know it's not breaking nothing's falling off it works really well the wings of the Batwing are easily the most playable section of the Batwing itself. They are also just completely massive. Now, first thing I want to show off right away is that these are adjustable, so if you want to, you can move them all the way down like this and <laughs> just have really different poses. You know, you can slightly move them so you know you get a different look from the front. You do have the option and they work really well, you know, they're completely held in place by friction. They're not gonna like drop on their own. They're really well done there. There's also little small wing tips on the ends here, which are not actually attached by missile wall joints, but by hinges. So they are adjustable like this, you know. There's different poses you can get from them. They they work well, you know. They There's just a little bit of uh, custom ability there. In addition, you know, there are, of course, all of these stickers, which I did mention earlier. And there's also a sticker sort of pointing an arrow towards the function, which is a small little detail, but also a nice one. On this side, it has a two red lights on the back here which is kind of weird you know i'm not 100 percent sure why they're there it seems like it's just trying to be sort of a city reference kind of like blinkers and such you know for the battling on the other side they are a green however the playability on this is just crazy so first off on the back you have a disc shooter so mainly what you would do is you just press this down and you can launch a disc like this now that can be hard to use because there's a certain amount of force required to actually get the disc to launch. So in some cases you're going to click it and try to get it to launch and it'll only go halfway, which is a little bit annoying. However, there's more to it than just a disc shooter. There's also, of course, the typical spring-loaded shooter, which work extremely easily. You just tap them down like this and they launch forward and they work extremely well and they're very accurate. I also wanted to quickly show off the bottom of the Batwing because they do have a little bit of details in there which you otherwise wouldn't see which are kind of cool and just nice to see that they did try to put a little bit of detailing in there. On the bad guy side Harley Quinn gets this little cannon. Now this is kind of interesting because it's something that's just so small it looks like you'd have really no chance going up against the Batwing with this thing. However there's some small little features in that that are kind of cool. 
So, you know, first off, main feature here, there's a six stud shooter, obviously. So, the way this works, you grab from the top and you shoot the stud like that. And I'm not going to shoot them all because I don't want to lose all my studs, even though this set does, of course, come with an extra set. There's also this little clip up here, which is kind of weird, you know, you kind of wonder why is there a clip there? Well, the clip actually is there for a purpose. You can put Harley Quinn's weapon on the top like this, and you can store it there. And there's multiple different ways. You could do it like this, or you could have the hammer on the other side. I like it like this, personally, because there's this uh, slope piece, so it just makes more sense to me. But, you know, there is that little option. You can store the hammer on the top of the cannon, which is kind of nice and kind of cool. Also, in addition, you know, there's tons of little detailings. On this side, we have this antenna piece, the red transparent set in the grill, which some, has some nice detailing. And on the back, there's this weird, just, ball joint. I'm not sure what the ball joint's for. Um, I think it might have been for a sort of function that would have gone with her cannon truck, which wasn't actually released, or at least at this point, it hasn't been released. So that is kind of interesting. And then on the other side, you can see that there's a little winding switch, so you could pretend to sort of wind the cannon and you can launch it based off that. Now, this set also does have a little bit of adjustability, you know, you can move the cannon up like this and it holds itself in place, you know. It's not gonna, like, just fall back down instantly or fall the other way. You can go all the way up to here and there's still enough friction in there so you can hold it. And even though it falls down a little bit here, you know, part of that's because of the extra weight of the hammer, but this ball joint also does help to stabilize it. Now, there's also a small detail here because, um, you have this red stripe and the black stripe, which is just a little bit of a shout out to Harley Quinn because of her color scheme. This set comes with a total of three minifigures, which is kind of small for a set as big as this, you know, $90, three minifigures, kind of small minifigure selection, which is a little disappointing. However, this one does have some pretty good minifigures. It of course comes with Batman, just like all of the Lego Batman movie sets. It comes with Robin, and it comes with an exclusive version of Harley Quinn. And the Harley Quinn figure just has printing all over the place. Harley Quinn has printing on the sides of her arms and her legs on both sides, and she also comes with this exclusive skirt piece, which a lot of people want, so that is a thing. She also comes with a giant brick-built hammer, which has printing on the side to, again, you know, have a little bit of that Harley Quinn pattern, and it also does have the sort of bullseye on the front. Batman, of course, comes with the utility belt and the battering, and Robin doesn't have any weapons of that sort. On the back, you can see more printing on Harley Quinn, and when you remove the accessories for Batman and Robin, you can of course see alternate faces for all three of these characters, and you can see some printing on the back. And here's what they look like with their alternate faces. Overall though, the Batwing is an extremely great set. The Batwing itself really is the star of the show. It's just so massive and so great. It just, it looks really cool. It looks exactly how you would want it to, especially comparing it to the movie. It looks really similar to the way it did in the movie. The portrayal is really good. The function can be a little bit annoying, but the playability it adds in there is good. It's very, you know, swooshable. You can fly it in the air really easily because of that handle in the back, which is really cool. In addition, the handle is also really well built in. It's one of the one of the rarer cases that LEGO can build in the handle and it's not like just some random Technic meme that sticks out and is kind of annoying. You know, some cases, you know, they do certain things to make them retractable, but in this case it flows extremely well and it's just a nice part of the design and really no one would even notice it. In addition, Harley Quinn's little cannon is really cool, you know, it's a nice cannon, the playability is there. However, it just feels way too small to actually be able to fight something as massive as the Batwing. The contrast between the two is just way too big to me to really feel like, you know, there's any chance of Harley Quinn to really truly be able to take this thing down. The little small go-kart for Robin is okay, you know, it's it is. It's a nice little thing to have in there, but you know, I wish you could put Robin inside with it. You know, it'd be so much better if you could throw the Robin minifigure on top of it. So that way you could just deploy Robin just going straight out of the car, you know, going right at Harley Quinn into battle. That'd be a cool thing, however, you know, it's just something that you can't do. Overall, the really only problems I have with this set is for one, this is a set that's so big and it has no stand whatsoever. It's the type of set where, you know, you really want to display it, but you've got only certain, certain, you know, things you can do. You can move the wings and get different sort of looks at it, which is fine. But the set is the set that feels like it needs a stand, because if you had that stand, it could be so much cooler. You could move the engine pods and you could have them in certain angles that you can't have when it's on the ground, because, you know, there's only certain ways you can have it on the ground, because, you know, the way the function is. 
And in addition, you could also, you know, have that gun. You could have it centered if you wanted to, which is something you can't do without a stand, which is really unfortunate, but you know, there's only so much you can do. So I'm probably going to be building a stand for this and making a video later because, you know, this is I just it'd be so much cooler with a stand because you'd have so much more displaying here that you could do. Even something just as, as simple like just the simplest stand in the world would be better than no stand because it's just it's so big it's something so great it's something so many people that have are going to be proud to have it they're going to want to be displaying it all the time but there's going to be no stand for them to do it and that's just annoying but other than that there's no real problems with it the set's really well designed the build is phenomenal if, if you're going to get the set just have fun with the build there's a lot of little areas in there where you're looking at it and you're like whoa this is so crazy for example at this area this area and especially for me i was just like what is this it's so crazy it was really cool though overall the set's good the only real bad thing for me is that the minifigure selection is kind of disappointing However, at the same time, that Harley Quinn figure is amazing. It's by far the best minifigure here, one of the best minifigures we're going to be getting from this line, in my opinion. And a set like this, you know, it's the Batwing. You, you know, if you know what it is because of the trailers, it's the, probably the most prominent thing in the in the movie. It's just overall great, and the set doesn't disappoint. That's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Till next time, I'll see you guys later.